welcome to the Property Elite podcast. I'll be your host, Jen Lehman, Chartered Surveyor and Co-Founder of Property Elite. Stay tuned each week for more on industry hot topics, market updates and new RICS guidance. In this week's podcast, I take a look at the RICS guidance note surveyors advising in respect to the Electronic Communications Code first edition. It's essential listening for any APC or ASOP RICS candidates involved in the telecommunications sector. You can download a copy of the guidance note off the RICS website or off our website blog. Any surveyors advising on the electronic communications code and related matters must also be aware of and adhere to the Ofcom code of practice. This includes guidance on the service of notices and acting reasonably, professionally and respectfully. So firstly, what is the Electronic Communications Code, or ECC? In 2017, the Digital Economy Act 2017 introduced the ECC to facilitate the rollout and maintenance of digital electronic communications infrastructure, such as television, radio, fixed and mobile broadband, voice and text services, cable television and landlines. The ECC replaced the former Schedule 2, of the Telecommunications Act 1984, the old code. The ECC is included at Schedule 1 of the Digital Economy Act 2017 and introduces Schedule 3A to the Communications Act 2003. All code agreements may benefit from security of tenure under Part 2 of the Landlord and Tenant Act 1954. Agreements under the ECC do not benefit from security of tenure if the primary purpose is to grant code rights. The ECC provides a statutory framework for the relationship between network operators, infrastructure providers and site providers, such as landowners or landlords. This includes agreements to install, operate and maintain apparatus. The ECC aims to balance the interests of key stakeholders, as well as working in the public interest. This will help to clarify the more flexible rights of operators and facilitate the sharing of network apparatus. So who are network operators? Network operators are split into two categories, those who are code network operators with powers under Section 106 of the Communications Act 2003 and non-code operators. Ofcom hold a list of code network operators online. Next, what type of electronic communications networks are there? There are a number of different types, including fixed line, wireless and satellite. And what type of infrastructure installations are there? These include greenfield, such as in rural areas or in urban or suburban areas along transport infrastructure routes, rooftop, street-based, subterranean and in-building. So the ECC aims to reach a negotiated settlement between the parties rather than mandating a set of specified terms. However, if a agreement cannot be reached, then the parties can refer the matter to the Upper Tribunal Lands Chamber. It's not retrospective, so it does not automatically apply to old code agreements. However, there are some transitional arrangements that do apply. Under the ECC, provisions are made for consideration and compensation under paragraphs 24 and 25 and part 14. Payments are generally in the form of an annual rent encompassing all payments as per EE Limited and Hutchinson 3G UK Limited versus the Mayor and Burgesses of the London Borough of Islington 2019. Alternatively, a one-off capital sum may be paid. So how is consideration assessed? Surveyors must be conversant with the Red Book Global 22, applying mandatory PS1 to 2 and any valuation work relating to the code. Market value under the ECC differs from the VPS4 definition, as it requires special assumptions to be made including that the right that the transaction relates to does not relate to the provision or use of an electronic communications network. This introduces what is known as the no network assumption to exclude from the assessment of consideration any element of value attributable to the intention of the operator to use the site for part of its network. This is based on the no scheme rule taken from compulsory purchase valuation principles and it reflects the value to the landowner rather than the value to the operator and tied to future use as a telecommunications site. Paragraph 24.2 of the ECC defines market value specifically as the amount that at the date the market value is assessed, a willing buyer would pay a willing seller for the agreement. A, 
in a transaction at arm's length, B, on the basis that the buyer and seller were acting prudently and with full knowledge of the transaction, and C, on the basis that the transaction was subject to the other provisions of the agreement imposed by the order under paragraph 20. This assessment is subject to the following specific provisions of paragraph 24.3. The market value must be assessed on these assumptions. A. The right that the transaction relates to does not relate to the provision or use of an electronic communications network. B. Paragraph 16 and 17. Assignment and upgrading and sharing do not apply to the right or any apparatus to which it could apply. C. The right in all other respects corresponds to the code right. And D, there is more than one site which the buyer could use for the purpose for which the buyer seeks the right. In short, the new ECC basis of value generally leads to much lower valuations than under the old code. Next up, how is compensation assessed? Compensation is dealt with in paragraph 25 of the ECC and requires a causal connection between acquisition and loss, a loss that is not too remote, and that the claimant should seek to mitigate the loss and avoid incurring unreasonable expenses. Surveyors, therefore, need to be aware of and avoid double counting between consideration and compensation. So how do alterations, upgrades, and sharing work in the ECC? This is dealt with in paragraph 17, including an impact and burden test. As a starting point, new agreements should include a photographic scheduler condition and as-built drawings. The ECC provides for an automatic right to assign code agreements. However, the agreement may require the outgoing operator to act as guarantor to the immediate incoming operator, similar to providing an AGA under the Landlord and Tenant Covenants Act 1995. The ECC also provides operators with an automatic right to share or upgrade apparatus, providing the following conditions are met. Number one, the upgrade or sharing of apparatus should have no adverse impact or more than a minimal adverse impact on the appearance of the apparatus. Two, the upgrade or sharing of apparatus should not impose any additional burden on the landowner. And three, an additional burden includes agreeing that, one, it has an additional adverse effect on the other party's enjoyment of the land, or two, it causes additional loss, damage, or expense to that party. Next up, how do access rights work? Access is a key term to consider an ECC agreement. Normal and alternative access routes should be agreed along with the process, notification, and frequency of site visits. And finally, how can ECC agreements be terminated? There's a two-stage process to terminate an ECC agreement. Part one, the site provider must give at least 18 months notice to the operator, citing one of four grounds roughly based on section 30 of the Landlord and Tenant Act 1954. This includes substantial breaches, persistent delays in paying rent and redevelopment. The operator has three months to serve a counter notice, either opposing or agreeing to the termination, and then a further three months to apply to court for a court order, the nature of which will depend on the circumstances. Part two, the site provider must give notice to the operator to remove their apparatus and make good the land. Again, a court order can be applied for if needed. Thanks for listening to the Property Elite podcast this week. Head to our website to check out our full blog, free and paid support resources and services, free consultation for every single RICS APC and ASOC RICS candidate, and also ask us any questions you have via the website chat blog. See you next week.